hello welcome to the sincerely nicole rose podcast realizing that i can now do this on my computer and i've moved around has been huge and i've been really deeply contemplating on what the heck I should talk about in these episodes because so much has changed in my life. So many things have happened and I haven't even really been speaking that much to people around me. I've just been processing all of it. And um, if you follow me on Instagram, you know, at the start of the year, I was diagnosed with ADHD, which because I've had it my whole life undiagnosed, is now referred to as adult ADHD. And realizing how much that has impacted me growing up and how much of my habits, whether good or bad, are part of that. It's It's been a lot and I haven't known when and what to share and what to keep personal because unlike the other mental health issues and there's there's a big difference between ADHD and anxiety being ADHD is permanent. It's a neurodivergency, which means that your brain is literally made differently. Whereas anxiety is, it's a disorder. It's something that happens that can be treated that for some people doesn't go away, but it is possible for it to go away. And I've been all over the place trying to figure out do I talk about this I know absolutely nothing about this um what do I talk about what don't I talk about I'm also if you can hear purring in the background my kitty Sam is totally sitting on my lap and purring right now so you're welcome and I think the biggest reconciliation that I've had to make is what is ADHD and what is my personality? I've had this. It's It's been with me for so long and I've been unaware of it that there are so many things that I have lined up as, oh, this is just how I am and there's nothing I can do to change them. And now being able to look at them and actually say, well, I don't have to do that. That compulsion I have, I don't have to do it. I can separate myself from it because I actually know what's causing it now. Um, An example of this is if you've had a conversation with me, even listening to this podcast, you know that I'm prone to oversharing. And that's because my brain gets a hit of dopamine when I overshare with people. So in desperation for a quick hit, I will overshare something with someone that makes it a lot harder for us to connect makes me feel isolated makes that person feel awkward and causes a disconnect and leaves me feeling isolated so now when I'm talking to people and I have this insane urge to overshare and a compulsion is the best way I can put it like everything in me wants to do this like I almost have to bite my tongue to stop myself from saying things and now I realize like actually this is this is the ADHD and whether I choose to partner with it or not it's going to be there those urges are still going to happen but I can I can stop it I can choose whether I'm going to do that or not I'm not a victim of my mind although if I'm honest sometimes it really does feel like that um but being able to actually see like wow this isn't who I am this is just part of what I have and I just want to take a moment to interrupt this regularly scheduled podcasting to let you know that this episode is sponsored by an amazing new single coming out called Color of Our Blood. It is a single made by Annabelle and Foxy. And guys, this thing is going to be an absolute banger. So if you look on the screen right now, if you want to enjoy this incredible thing and add it to your Spotify pre-save collection, you can go to Buffly and then this next piece. So you type into your browser, B-U-F-F dot L-Y forward slash. And I'll make sure these, this last bit is all capital letters. 
2TR8 G O G and it'll take you to their pre-save page. So once again, that's B U F F dot L Y forward slash 2TR8 G O G. I hope you guys listen to this, love this, and support some local artists. It's a big deal. Let's get around the people we love. Let's support them. And I just want to add that I love these two people. So anything they put out is obviously going to be amazing. So remember that's Buffly forward slash 2TR8GOG. That's Buffly forward slash 2TR8GOG. I hope you guys enjoy it. And back to the episode. And learning to separate that from one another. Um, it's been it's been a bit sad in one way because I'm 24 years old, and that doesn't sound very old, but 24 years is a long time to be one way, and then to kind of have things that you believe for years are intrinsically who you are, turn out to be symptoms of a neurodivergency and realizing that um, those symptoms have actually hurt you along the way and they've hurt your relationships with people, um, like the oversharing, the need to be brutally honest, um, things like that, I'm sure affected the way I interacted with people when I was younger. Um, Another um, very common symptom of ADHD is thousands of thoughts running through your mind. The best way I can feel it is having five voices talking at the same time and they really just never stop. And I spent years of my life genuinely contemplating whether I was crazy. And I'm not talking about from my late teens. I'm, I'm talking about from eight nine I started journaling when I was 12 and I can read back then and see how much of those how much those thoughts were impacting my daily life and it breaks my heart because I want to go back to like young me I'm talking preteen child me and just be like Nicole you are not crazy you are different but you're not alone and this is how you can learn how to live and interact with people. Something that really bugged me in all of this was realizing how much ADHD is just marked as a, sorry, there's a helicopter, but it's just marked as a, um, as a school illness or a learning deficiency. Um, and it's really not. It is really not. To anybody listening to this, first I want you to know I was a very good student. All of my report cards said she is an absolute treasure to have in class. Quiet, listens, and pays attention. Work is always in on time. I did very well in school. Just because somebody has something that is generally attributed to people who struggle does not mean that it's going to manifest that way. Do you know why I was so good and quiet in school? Because I have ADD, which is ADHD inattentive. It means I could zone out for hours, absolute hours. My family used to say I was on Planet Nicole. And you know what's so sad about that is during that time, I was disassociating, which means that my brain was literally taking time and switching off and trying to stop impulses from happening because I was overwhelmed and overstimulated. It's not good. It's one of the first things you see when you see something when people are diagnosing. Disassociating is unhealthy. Um, Healthy people don't disassociate. Their brains don't need to just stop and tune out to help them cope. And I did that for years. Like, literally, my family used to call it Planet Nicole. It was normal for me to disassociate. And it was something I just assumed I'd be able to do for the rest of my life. And it was kind of part of how I coped with things. And realizing that that is unhealthy and that I need to 
adjust my life in a way that I'm not constantly overstimulated and don't need to disassociate is it's been a huge adjustment like I say when you've when you've done something for so long um and the thing is like my body still desires to do it and I still do it today often and I have to catch myself and be like I'm overstimulated I need to go take a break and it's really really hard you know the FOMO that comes with um learning that a this isn't part of my personality b this isn't healthy and c um I need to now take the steps that this has shown me which means I need to go to my bedroom and sometimes just turn off the lights and lie in the dark and do breathing exercises because I am super overstimulated right now. It's hard. It's really hard. It causes me to miss out on a lot. But I've I've burnt out three times in my life. And these burnouts have been big. They've been ugly. And they have been disastrous. Yeah, they've been absolutely disastrous. So how I'm building this time after my burnout in December is oh December November December January February March that entire time period is I am trying to build differently if I just get healthy enough to start coping again and go back to what I was doing I'm going to end back exactly where I was and to anybody else who has burnt out Ever. I just want to extend my deepest sympathy and empathy to you because I have been there and it is absolute hell. I am so sorry that you had to go through that um, as someone who's been there and I never want to go through that again. So yeah, another Another way I realized it impacted me a lot was I've always viewed myself as flaky um, because I can't really commit to one thing for a long period of time. And I'm not talking about big things. I mean, I've been a Christian for over a decade now, actually 11 years. Wow, this is 11 years. That's a big deal. But back to back to what I was talking about. Um, Flaky. Because I've never been able to stick to a hobby. Y'all, I can do so many things. You don't realize it. I can do leather work. I can bead. I can take apart and put together a chainsaw. I can crochet. Man, I can do makeup. I can read a trilogy in two days if you give me the time to hyper-focus on it. I can kind of code websites. I mean, I can put together a podcast. I can work multiple different social media feeds. I can sew. I'm pretty decent with fashion styling, with room styling. I fully understand chicken care and gardening. And y'all, that's just the top of the list. I have had so many different hobbies over the years. It is scary. Like the only things I've really managed to maintain throughout my life are the fact that I've journaled since I was 12 and that I've been reading since I was 12. That's it. Everything else is just all over the place. And do you know how much of a failure you feel like when you are constantly dropping hobbies? Now, as an adult, that doesn't affect me so much because I pay for my life now and um, if I don't want to do something anymore, that's fine. As as a child, when um, you are looking to adults to show you what is the way to do things and the the way to do things, what you are shown is you commit to one thing and you stick to it for a long period of time. Um, that's, that's normal. It's, it's really, really hard. And it left me with a huge fear of doing things because inside I would know that like, I wouldn't be able to stick to this for very long. And that is one of the reasons I went into social media as a field because it is such a diverse job. 
I write, I design, I schedule, I research platforms. I'm constantly learning. I'm constantly stimulated. Working with every different brand gives me something new to work on. And that's fantastic. I'm one of the lucky people who was able to cultivate a career that adjusted for my neurodivergency. Most people don't have that privilege. They really don't. I am one of the very, very few who managed to cultivate something that worked for me. Yay me. But realizing, and um, when I, oh, I, I don't think I want to get into this because this is extremely personal, but let's just say at the end of 2019, something devastating happened. It was a conversation and a lot of things were said to me. And one of the things that were said to me was that I'm flip floppy and flaky. And that crushed me because it was a fear that I'd been dealing with inside for a really long time. And um, it was something that I knew about myself and tried to mask because I didn't want people to think that of me. I wanted to be consistent. I wanted to be hardworking. Um, yeah, sorry about that notification. But I have now learned to just allow my mind to direct me. And realizing that I am not a failure, I'm just different. And actually, Something I've done recently is instead of trying to force myself to stick with things, I've been allowing myself the freedom to go in and out of what I'm doing as my brain desires it. I've been having so much fun. So like I'm in a crochet zone at the moment. So I've crocheted uh, two blankets. I'm Yo, I'm halfway through a third one at the moment, and I'm just vibing with it. I am going for as long as this hubby wants to go for, and when it stops giving me dopamine, I'm going to switch to whatever I want to do next. Because before this, I painted. The journal I'm busy with at the moment is just, it's just covered in paint. Like, covered in paint. I think I must have done like eight or nine paintings, and I'm talking about like eight or nine two-hour paintings. And it was so much fun fun like I can't even tell you how much fun I was having and before that I was in a reading mood like y'all I read so much I must have read about 20 30 books before um that passed and letting go and allowing my hobbies to dictate me instead of me dictating my hobbies and what I mean by my hobbies is the dopamine allowing my brain in this particular area to tell me what it wants to do, what it wants, instead of me trying to say, I know this is what you want, but this is you're going to get, has been so healthy. And it has been so much fun because I don't feel like a failure and I don't feel flip floppy anymore because I've totally let go of that. And I've allowed myself the freedom to create and have fun creating. And it's been incredible. So I'm still learning. There are so many aspects to my personality that I realize are deeply linked to this neurodivergency. It's also been really freeing. Like, guys, I can forget anything. I can lose anything. It's a gift. It's a terrible gift I have, but it is a gift I have. And being able to, mm, how do I say, now know that that's something permanent it's not something i'm really going to be able to fix and being able to account for it has been amazing and my mom reminds me so my biggest gift is i can lose my keys my handbag my wallet and my cell phone like it's no one's business guys you have no idea so now i have a hook in the entry hall where i hook my keys Every single time I come in, if I don't hook them there, my mom walks to my room. She's like, Nicole, your keys aren't where they're supposed to be. You need to go put them back. And I keep my handbag in the same place. And we've enabled something on my phone that allows a allowed pinging notification to be sent through, even when it is on silent. So knowing these things about myself has allowed me to create processes and accountability with people 
so they can hold me in check because I'm not going to be able to fix my short-term memory. And like short-term memory, I'm talking about, I put this there or someone said that. Um, I generally have like pretty decent long-term memory, especially if I hyper-focus on something and it's something I've been super interested in. Guys, the amount of useless facts in my brain like right now a fact going through my brain is scruffing your cats scares them it does not remind them of your mom that means when you grab them by the scruff of the neck and picks them up they freeze because they're afraid not because they're happy don't do that to your cats like i know so many useless facts like that like do you know why people shake hands with their right hand i'm gonna tell you because this is one of my favorite facts ever and every time i tell it to my family they're like nicole you've already told us this 10 times please stop but i digress here is how it goes so people shake hands with their right hand because most of the world is right hand dominant now not everybody there are people who are left hand dominant but in medieval society around when this started it was a show of good faith to show that you were unarmed so you would produce your empty hand and the person you were talking to would produce their empty hand and you would then shake hands as a sign of good faith and that you were a friend not a foe how cool is that how cool is that so i have tons of useless facts like that running around in my head they bring me so much joy i don't even fight them anymore <laughs> but yeah it's been one heck of a journey um and i'm i'm not even halfway there yet these are just three things i've learned and they're probably three main things there's there's so much been going on um and it's been really cool to learn these things and really interesting. And I want to get into this more and more, but I, I really don't know that much about it. I think the hardest thing for me about this diagnosis is how little I know. So before I started talking about mental health being anxiety and depression, guys, I've had this for years. I've had years to research, to learn, to educate myself. So when I, I've i been in therapy for years. So when I speak, I'm, I'm speaking from a place of knowing. Um, with ADHD, I'm still learning what the heck is this and how deeply has it infiltrated my life. And the answer is I'm kind of, I picture it this way um two plants planted with the roots intermingled and they kind of grow so closely and intertwined with one another that pulling one out will damage the other and that's really what it is like i'm never going to be rid of this but knowing about it now i can make better decisions like another silly thing is I hate breakfast foods. I'm sorry. Those of you who love eggs and bakey, it's not me. It's really not me. I love my chickens with my whole heart. I care for them. I feed them twice a day. I cuddle them. I make sure their water dish is clean. I make sure their hay is fresh. Move them regularly. I love my chickens. I don't like eggs. Like, I go through phases where I'm like, woo, eggs, but like, yeah. It is not my favorite food. So something that gives me a hit of dopamine is drinking the same drink every morning. Bam. Or the same two breakfasts. I vary between a meal replacement shake and my beautiful smoothie that I make every morning. And if I can't have one of those two things, I generally just won't eat. And being able to see that, hey, Actually, if I just account for the fact that those are the two things I like in the morning, take the decision paralysis and executive dysfunction option right away from this, I can make a better decision every single day by teaching myself to like something healthier and become accustomed to having it all the time. Bam. I am a very habitual person. Like my dietitian asked me to do Sorry, we live by the harbor. My dietitian asked me to do a photo food diary for her. Guys, I felt so sorry for her. I realized when I sent it through to her, I eat the exact same thing every day. 
with the exception of dinner because my mom makes that like I am deeply habitual and it is hilarious <laughs> it is hilarious how boring I am and when I say boring I am it means like how repetitive I like my life because routine is safe and it is easy and that is something the anxiety that masked my ADHD for so long has taught me to love and something that actually works really well for me habits help me make sure I get everything done instead of getting distracted because I can get distracted. If you've listened to my previous podcasts, something I'm going to tell you is my podcasts are all unscripted. I literally just open the computer and I talk. I don't make any notes. And you will know sometimes I literally pause for like a minute and I'm like, what was I talking about? And that is me losing my train of thought in the middle of the podcast. You are welcome for that nuggy of information. (sighs) <sighs> yeah, so I, this is the first time I'm talking about it on here and it's a big deal for me and I just want to say to everyone who's been praying for me and who's loved me even though I have just tapped out for a really long period of time, you mean so much to me and I am working on doing this more regularly but I'm definitely not in a podcast phase at the moment if you know what I mean, and learning to listen to my brain and healthily give it the dopamine it wants when it wants it has been a great experience. So this episode is going to be ending now, but I just want to thank all of you for listening. Um, I'm definitely planning to do more podcasts about this as I learn. Um, I'm also going to be doing an episode on chronic fatigue syndrome because I've also been diagnosed with that. I've been pretty sure I've had it for a long period of time, but the doctors I've seen haven't been willing to diagnose me with it. And when I saw this year, um, he had a look into everything. He ran a bunch of blood tests and he was finally willing to diagnose me with it. So what is it? How it affects you? Um, hmm, Just just educating people um the more we know the more empathetic sympathetic and intentional we can be when we interact with people so i love you so much thank you all for listening if you enjoyed this episode please would you like comment would you subscribe wherever you're listening you can follow me on instagram at sincerely nicole rose i love all of you i appreciate you thank you for listening and i'll see you in the next episode